Hello everybody, welcome to today's YouTube tutorial. Premiere Pro can be a little bit of a hassle sometimes, especially when you get that error message that pops up that says, hey, something went wrong. Do you want to send an error report or not? Because it crashed. And you're like, I just want to work on my project. Please open Premiere Pro back up. So today I've come up with a list of 10 things that you can do to help Premiere Pro keep from crashing, but it's best to do it in a line from step one to step 10 in order to make sure that we've covered all the bases. To get started, we're going to head inside of Premiere Pro. Step number one, we are going to head into our media cache by going to edit down to preferences and then go to media cache. From here, you're going to hit the delete button on remove media cache files. You can do one of two things. You can delete unused media or you can delete all media. If your Premiere Pro has been awful and just keeps crashing over and over, I recommend doing the all media caches. Media cache files, if you don't know what they are, they're basically temporary files that Premiere Pro makes to help make editing easier whenever you open up a project. Some people I've seen in my comments from other videos would delete their media cache files for like After Effects and stuff, and there's like 200 gigabytes worth of media cache files. So it's always a great starting place for finding the culprit of why Premiere Pro keeps crashing. The next thing that we are going to do is change our media cache management. So right now it's set to do not delete cache files automatically. We're going to actually change this to automatically delete the cache files older and then I would say 20 days. So that means any media cache files that were created 20 days ago on a project that you may have been working on 20 days ago will be deleted for you. Next, what we are going to do is head down into memory. Right now, I have 32 gigabytes of RAM on my computer. You guys may have less, you guys may have more. To be honest, editing without at least 32 gigabytes of RAM could definitely be the reason why your Premiere Pro is either running slow and or crashing. But here you can actually see the RAM reserved for other applications. So when Premiere Pro is open, it will take up 20 gigabytes of RAM and leave 12 gigabytes open for any other applications that are open on your computer. So if this is set to like, I don't know, 2025 RAM reserved for other applications, bring that down to 12 or bring that down to eight or bring that down to six. It really just matters how much RAM you have. The less RAM you have overall, if you have 16 gigabytes of RAM, I'd recommend leaving six gigabytes open for other applications. That way your computer can hone in the most amount of hardware resources to run Premiere Pro, After Effects, all the other stuff. This wasn't on my list, but it is a bonus. If you head up to autosave within the preferences, you can check this box that says autosave also saves the current project. That means that every time that your Premiere Pro does crash, you don't have to go in and use one of the auto saves. You can actually just use your current project. After that, we've messed with all the settings that I think we need to with inside of the preferences. We're going to hit OK. The next thing that I have written down should be a given. You guys have probably already done this already, but just in case you haven't, if you're working with like 4K footage or, you know, 2K footage, you're going to want to change your resolution playback size to half or one fourth. And if your computer is running with not a lot of RAM or a bad processor, you may have to do one eighth. Some things within Premiere Pro just require you to have a better system when editing certain footage. Now for my beginners in Premiere Pro, this drop down right here does not affect your final picture. Whenever you export your video, it will not have, you know, one fourth of the quality. It's just within the program playback within Premiere Pro. The next thing that we will be doing is moving outside of Premiere Pro. If you head down to your desktop and then type in Windows R, then type in percent sign temp percent sign, hit enter. It'll open up a folder with all of your temporary files within your computer. You can hit control A and delete these guys. But if you get an action window that says folder is in use and it can't be completed because the folder is in use in another program, check the box that says do this for all items and hit skip. This will skip everything that your computer is actively using right now. The next thing we can do is also hit Windows R and then just type in the word temp. This is another temporary folder that stores temporary files. If you get something that says folder access denied and then it has a continue button with a shield, click this and also check the do for all items. And then we also get our folder in use action folder. We're going to hit skip on this guy. And then we've deleted all of our temporary files. 
The next thing that we're going to do is check the amount of disk space that you have. Whenever you don't have enough disk space and your computer is trying to work with only a few gigabytes left, your computer will run very, very slowly. To do this, we're going to head to our file explorer. And if you don't have file explorer down in the start here, just type in file explorer, click this guy. And then we're going to head into our main. This is our D drive. This is where most of your actual files are stored. Maybe your computer only has one hard drive. In that case, we're going to click on whichever one I think it would be. I think it would also be a D drive, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, click on your main hard drive for your computer. Right click on this guy and hit properties. We're going to check the capacity. As you can see, I have almost two and a half gigabytes of free space. You guys may look a lot different. It may be completely filled up. We're gonna hit disk cleanup right here. We're going to select everything that comes up. Um, there may be more things and more folders for you guys to check here. Then we're going to click clean up system files then hit okay. We're also going to optimize this hard drive by heading over to tools and then optimize. Make sure that you have your hard drive selected and then hit analyze, then hit optimize. This will go through a couple different passes and it will let you know whenever it's finished. Once that's finished, we can actually close out of all these windows. We're going to go down and type in windows update. We're going to click on check for updates. We're just gonna make sure that windows doesn't have any updates. So as you can see, I actually have updates available. Walk through the process of updating your computer and then you can also update your drivers as well. Another thing to look at, are your startup programs that start up whenever you start up your PC. In order to see those guys, we're going to right click on the taskbar and go to task manager, then head over to startup. As you can see in the task manager, we are shown a bunch of different processes that can be started whenever you start up your computer. The status will show you if it's disabled or enabled. If you see one that's like, oh, I don't really want the CCX process starting whenever I start up my computer, right click and then hit disable. I'm gonna also right click and hit disable on the creative cloud. You guys may have processes like a GoXLR. I use a GoXLR for my audio. Those things do need to start up whenever you start up your computer to make sure that you can actually hear things whenever your computer starts up. So try not to disable things that you don't know exactly what they are. So like Spotify, for instance, you'd wanna disable that guy. That's just one extra process that you're probably not even gonna use as soon as you start up your computer, but it's starting up anyway. If you've done everything up until this point and you're still having problems with your Premiere Pro or you think you are going to still have problems with your Premiere Pro. I have two other things that I'm going to show you right now. These things will change the workflow a little bit of what you are editing currently. However, it may solve the problem. The first thing is actually copying your project folder, the entire folder that you have where your project is and moving it onto your desktop if it's not there already. If you're doing it from like an external hard drive, maybe the external hard drive isn't fast enough or the SD card that you're editing from, you're gonna wanna move that guy onto your desktop along with the footage and everything. That way it's only pulling from your desktop. That'll be the fastest drive within your computer that you can use to edit. And the final thing that I do have for you guys is actually running your footage through Handbrake. Handbrake is a video encoder that you can bring in your footage into Handbrake and have it re-encode the footage. Premiere Pro definitely likes to crash whenever you are using footage that could be partially partially not accessible. There's a lot of times when I'm editing a, you know, a stream clip or a Twitch VOD, that if my recorder OBS happened to go down for a second and come back, but still be recording, that during that frame or whenever it did go down, Premiere Pro will shut down. And so the best thing that you can do in that instance is to download Handbrake. I'll leave the link in the description for you and I'll open it up right now that we can kind of see it is, ah, yes, very good. I just downloaded this, so this is actually a good thing. If you downloaded Handbrake, you may have this thing come up that says you must install Net Desktop Runtime to run this application. Yes, install this guy. This is a Microsoft Windows Desktop Runtime installer. Uh, essentially, it is something made by Windows, so it's not something that you have to worry about. You're downloading something wrong. The link that it sends you to is this website from Microsoft. This will be the download link that it gives you. Uh, once it does give you that download link, you can open and install this guy. So install Microsoft Windows Desktop Runtime. From here, you're going to click on Handbrake. From here, we can actually drag and drop our footage into this guy. So I'm going to bring in that drone shot of the guy running from earlier in this tutorial. I'm going to drag it in this guy. They have different presets that you can change it to. So just know what you were shooting beforehand. So if you're shooting a video in 1080p at 30 FPS, we're going to hit 1080p at 30 FPS. 
Then we're going to go down to the save as we're going to hit browse and throw this guy back into whatever folder that you need it to go into. I'm going to call this handbrake at the end of it. And then we're going to start the encoder. Once it's done encoding, you can actually go back into your project. And I will show you this right now. We are looking at the non handbrake version. We're going to right click on the piece of footage that we're looking at. This is actually the sequence just to not confuse anybody. This is the actual sequence that I'm working in. And then this is the piece of footage. We're going to right click on this guy and hit replace footage and then select our handbrake version. We are now looking at a 1080p 30 version that has been re encoded. And so if there were any problems within the original video that Premiere Pro did not like for some reason, that has been solved. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this tutorial helped you. Let me know in the comments if it did not. And let me know some extra things that you found that maybe I didn't go over. I'll be happy to help you out. And if you head into the Discord with more issues, we'll be happy to help you out there as well. I'll see you guys in the next video.